Hi guys, Barry from Coffee vs Glass here and welcome to part one of my super cheap home server video series. So guys, part one of this is going to be covering the case and the power supply I've chosen for my cheap home server build. The case I bought is the Cooler Master Elite 130, which is the newest model in terms of their mini ITX cases that we're going to be looking at here. As you can see, it's covered predominantly with lots of meshes and holes. This is because it's touted really as being great for airflow and cooling. As you can see, there are two giant ones on the side, one on the top and one on the front. The back, of course, you've got your big ports for the power supply, IO and graphics cards. And again, around the side here, we have another giant huge cutout for airflow, which actually houses a little fan behind it. As we look at the front of the Cooler Master Elite 130, we've got two USB 3.0 ports with a headphone and microphone jack for people who need that. Then you've got a giant mesh front, which is actually housing the 120 millimeter fan. The Cooler Master logo is actually located in the very center of the fan to stop obstructing as much airflow as it possibly can. We've got the DVD CD optical slot at the top if we want to pop that out. We've got a USB 2 and the power and restart over the right hand side. We can actually pop off the front of the case if we choose to, to actually get exposed to that giant fan, uh, maybe to do some maintenance if we need to. Um, don't worry about pulling off the front here, it only pops off, there's no screws needed. Once we pull off the front, we're actually going to expose primarily the 120mm main intake fan into the case. Of course, we can see that we've got the pop-out slot for the top here, which is a CD and DVD drive, you pull that out from the back side. And we've actually got some nice dust mesh filling the front here. Now, annoyingly, the front panel is the only one of these giant cutouts for ventilation that actually has a dust filter built in. Taking the case apart is very simple. Like any modern case, it's just got a couple of thumb screws on the side, which we can undo and take off and then slot it back slightly. And then the whole three sides come off all in one go to expose the center. As you can see, once we pop open the case, it's a very, very sturdy construction thanks to this beam across the top here, which is going to add extra strength and rails to the case itself. Inside, we've got a power cable. In this case, it's a UK three pin power plug. We've got a little bag of tricks here, which is, uh, includes some four pin molets connectors for fans and some screws and cable ties. And then we're going to start looking at all the cables that we have inside here. Now these cables, firstly, are the big thick ones that are required for the USB 3, which we're going to plug onto our motherboard. And we've got some audio connectors for the microphone and headphones. Of course, you can see here we've got a little 80mm fan on the side here, which is going to blow air onto our motherboard nicely. And it's got a fan connector on there, but of course, if your motherboard only has one fan controller like a Mini ITX might, you might just want to connect it with a Molex connector just to get it blowing at full pace all the time. If we spin the case round, you can see that we've got the 80mm fan here, which is going to blow air onto the motherboard. And we've got a nice uh, supporting structure here, which we can actually use to either use for cable tidying, or we can actually put a hard drive onto. All the rest of the cables here are for the power restart and USB 2 over the right hand side of the front panel, as you can see just here. One of the great things is about this case is that it's very, very spacious for things like hard drives. Now, they actually tout on their website, Corner Master, that you can fit up to one optical drive, three hard drives, or five SSDs in various configurations. As you can see, we can fit up to two in the optical drive slot uh, of SSDs or one uh, normal hard drive. We can fit an SSD on the bottom of the optical drive if we choose to. We could also fit a two SSDs or one uh, standard traditional spinning platter hard drive on the bottom of the case next to the motherboard. Or we can in fact put another hard drive uh, SSD uh, on the back of the supporting structure like I said earlier that could be used for either cable ties or it could be used for uh, a hard drive of some kind. So you can see you can really fit a lot of storage in this computer if you choose to of varying different types while still, in f while still using an optical drive if you choose to. The reason why I'm pointing out the front here is because, of course, we've got that huge 120mm fan on the front. But there's actually a lot of space at the front here for you to put a fan, a radiator, and a hard drive while still having room for the motherboard in there as well on the bottom of the case. So there's a lot, a lot of space here. It can fit a standard ATX power supply in here, so you don't have to worry about getting very small power supplies. So there's definitely a lot of room in this case to do what you might want to do with it. The last great feature in here is that it will fill... It will take pretty much any size graphics cards you can think of on the market. It fits up to 343 millimeters, that's 13 and a half inches long graphics cards, um, which is pretty long. And I don't think there's actually any graphics card that is currently that long on the market. So you don't have to worry about skimping out on a graphics card either. 
talking about the front panel let's have a closer look at that giant fan in the front of the case and the ports we have the fan is in a great position to actually pull air right into the case and give us great ventilation over our whole system directly onto the motherboard it's going to give us lots of nice cooling so lastly guys we're looking at the power supply that i bought which is a pretty standard 500 watt evga 80 plus power supply it comes with all the usual connectors we've got our pci express it's got two eight pin ports for that we've got our 24 pin atx connector it's got our one uh, times eight pin uh, eps cpu uh, power supply it's got uh, six sata ports it's got three molex connectors and one floppy disk connector if you should choose to have a floppy disk in this computer it's got a pretty standard design, it's quite nice and black, there's nothing too frilly about it, uh, it's got a nice giant fan on the top there as you would expect, which I'm actually going to be using as the extractor for the main air inside the case, um, so the front is going to be blowing in the main air, the power supply is going to be extracting it from the case. As you can see here, EVGA 500 watt and it's 80 plus rated. So that pretty much wraps it up guys, this is my part one of my really cheap home server build. Um, just to wrap up the prices, the case came in at about £40 in the UK uh, and the power supply came in at a very cheap £35. I'm hoping to do this whole build for about £250 for a very cheap server, of course it's going to be without a graphics card which is why it's so cheap, uh, but £250 should give us a decent enough server to run Plex and anything else for my living room entertainment. I'll catch you guys in the next videos for the next part, so check out for that on Copper vs. Glass.